Man, I'll tell you what, doing these in 20 minutes, there is uh, definitely going to be some people that are going to be backed up. So without uh, taking up too much time, uh, glad to see so many people here during their lunch break being able to see this. is uh, It's awesome crowd because you think in a community theater with everything going on behind here, it'd, it'd be tough to get a lot of people. But this is really cool to see and glad to see so many people. So I don't want to take up too much time. I don't want to kind of really dive into a demo. So I, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to make persistent applications available within inside of a Docker Swarm mode, but also utilizing the new managed Docker plugins. As we kind of saw today's keynote, the whole enterprise has kind of got this, this kind of push behind it. And with that comes a drag of all these applications that we've been using uh, for quite some time. And, you know, the idea is that not everything is going to be greenfield, right? And not only that is the, there's data. Right? We have this false sense of, of idea that all we want to do is run Docker containers as stateless. And this was a, a quote that was made famous at MesosCon this past year. And, you know, we don't technically have like a dataless data, data center. We want to figure out, and a lot of people want to say like, oh, we'll just go ahead and we'll just have this database live over here and we'll run everything stateless inside our containers. But you get a lot of... Uh, ability to actually have everything inside of a container in itself. So even if you want to say like, okay, I can run the Postgres server somewhere else and we'll stick to our old uh, virtualization backup technologies or uh, whether it's replication inside the database itself, you actually get a lot of benefits by containerizing the database too, right? I mean, if I think about it and that varlib MySQL directory lives off in some sort of storage, that means the container itself actually encapsulates all the computing power. That makes it super portable at that point, right? Like I don't have to worry about just the virtual machine that owns it, and then I gotta worry about all the configuration inside the virtual machine, everything like that. I can just spin up a new container and do that as well. And not only that, there's a lot more things that go into this, and as you can see, uh, I had to translate those over to Google Slides earlier because my Mac was kind of giving me crap, so uh, pardon the, um, uh, the bad formatting, but the top 10 of the top, sorry, the top, there's 10 of the top 30 applications inside Docker Hub today actually require some level of persistence, right? That's a pretty staggering number. So in, in my people that are maybe new to this space, you figure out like, well, how do I know which applications are actually require some level of persistence? The easiest way to do it is you go to Docker Hub or you try to find a, something that you're building and you look in there and you see this line that says volume and you see a data directory, a path right next to it, that means there's data that's required by this particular image, right? Now, web servers and Nginx and itself, like we can, we can throw config files at it all day, but something like a database or anything like that, you know, these are, these are, these are applications that we all use, right? They're CRM, they're job applications, uh, they are databases. All these different things require some level of persistence to be able to say, if I lose this container, or I lose this host, right? I mean, we can, we've been utilizing local volumes forever, but uh, I think that we've been around long enough to know that local volumes only get you so far, right? Because you lose the server, you've basically lost all your data anyway, right? So you got to figure out, well, how can we put this on some sort of centralized uh, piece? So I'm gonna talk about Rexray a little bit. Uh, anybody heard of Rexray before? All right, that's some awesome amount of hands. So for anybody that hasn't heard of Rexray before, we are the leading storage orchestration engine today for Docker and for cloud native workloads in itself. And I'm gonna go a little bit and talk a little bit why this matters, not only to just like operations people and the simplicity aspect, but as well as developers and other storage companies that actually wanna figure out, well, how do we get ourselves into this ecosystem? So a little bit pieces about what this does and, and really what Rexray does here and how it's helping your persistent applications. We are, do, we are providing all of the orchestration for it as well. So you think about everything that you have to go through for volume creation, detaching, attaching, uh, removal, all these pieces, it's actually orchestrating everything behind the scenes. A lot of people say, well, we're, we're just using blank NFS shares and uh, you know, I'm mounting it to all the hosts and then uh, if we lose a host, so what? Then I gotta go to config file on the share and, and remove that host now and that IP address. And it, that's a, that's a lot of manual intervention, right? So what we do is we automate all of the orchestration between uh, all the different storage platforms that we do support. We do consider ourselves enterprise ready. Rexray actually packages itself with a few different key elements, such as a, a fully built-in and functional CLI. And you think, well, okay, well, I see a lot of storage players here on the floor, like what makes that uh, a leading or a competitive advantage? Well, think about if you have a stale mount or a host that's in a, in a locked state, and now you need something that, um, you need this volume available on a different host. 
Well, how are you doing that? How are you forcefully make, making that unlock happen? Rexray is a full-blown CLI that has all the volume operation cycles or uh, volume lifecycle built into it. So I can say Rexray volume detach dash F and force this thing off and, and kill it off the host and make it go somewhere else. Anybody else that you might talk to, they'll say, oh, you gotta go to the GUI and you gotta you know, type in a few commands or whatever it is to be able to do that. At the same time, we also have built in a uh, high availability function called preemption. And what this is doing is we have, we'll say we have one container running on one host that has a lock on a read write volume. And now a, we'll say this host fails or we just say we spin up another container and now this container is, or is, is requesting access to that volume. Well, what it's gonna do is actually gonna talk to the storage backend, forcefully disconnect it from the previous host and attach it to the new host. Right, so now we get high availability built into our orchestrators, which I'll show you as well. This is also completely open source. It's all on GitHub. I encourage you to go to rexray.codelemc.com. That's a splash page for it. Gives you way more information. But then it also has a link to the GitHub page. This also flows into the development aspect of it that we're always looking for people to contribute. We have a lot of community contributed drivers for storage, as for storage pieces already. Trusted interoperability is another thing uh, that we have a very mature CI CD pipeline of what we built into this. So being able to test everything for the entire volume lifecycle. So if you are bringing your storage or your storage uh, underlying platforms to this, that we can actually do all the automated testing for you as well. Uh, we also have a package inside of here called Lib Storage. Uh, a lot of people have heard of Rexray. They might not know that Lib Storage is actually the guts of Rexray. That holds all the pieces for the storage orchestration and the storage lifecycle. Rexray is actually the, the northbound interface into, say, like doing the Docker volume driver registration. We have multiple platform support, which I'll talk about on the next slide. This is also, it's completely storage agnostic in the fact that we support everything from block, file, and object. So any application that you have that you want to throw at it, we can support some sort of storage platform underneath of it. It's effortless in the way that we can actually get this up and running. We have a very, very simplified architecture. So we have things such as a curl bash install as well as a Docker uh, container install to actually get this up and running. And I'll show that here in a minute as well. We have a standalone and decentralized architecture. So you have architectural choices with this as well. So if we think about this and, and if you go and you ask somebody else and you say, I've got, um, we'll say I've got a thousand nodes running inside of Amazon and I need, as, I need to utilize EBS volumes. All right, well, how are, you, how are you providing your access keys? Are you providing AIM profiles? Well, some people just, they'll throw their access keys in a configuration file or an environment variable, and now you've got that thrown across a thousand hosts in your environment. It's a huge security hole, right? Now, of course, we can do that as well if you want to go that, but we also have uh, lib storage inside of it, which comes with a agent control or a client server architecture. So what we can do is we can specify Rexray as a lightweight a client and those can go on a thousand nodes and then we have a centralized Rexray controller that actually holds all of your credentials, access keys, whatever it is that I need to talk to my backend infrastructure. So it removes that huge security risk by having all of that on all your hosts that are running. So here's all the storage platforms that we actually support today, right? You know, we're from Dell EMC, you would think like, oh yeah, well we support stuff on-prem. Oddly enough, when Rexray was first developed, all we did is we wrote the AWS driver. Uh, so it was since then we've progressed a long, long way. So we support things from EBS, EFS, and S3, Dell EMC on-prem, so everything from cloud uh, to on-prem uh, to local development. So cloud, you know, so DigitalOcean, uh, which was actually contributed by the engineers at DigitalOcean, they wrote it into Lib Storage. Uh, we've got other community drivers, which is Fitted Cloud, which is an optimized EBS instance. We also have, as I said, for local development, if you want to utilize VirtualBox, I'm, who here doesn't use VirtualBox? That's a better question, right? So everybody here pretty much uses VirtualBox. Well, how can you utilize this? Well, what you do is you spin up the SOAP API on a separate terminal window, and now you can utilize local volumes on your own host, right? So you don't need to sit there and spin up a, a blanket storage or a storage um, um, backend to be able to mess with local persistence, right? You can actually just utilize volumes with, with VirtualBox. So it's really cool being able to do that and we support, as I said, everything from uh, the development to production lifecycle. So if you want to use Rexray and development of VirtualBox, utilize testing resources, QA resources in any of these clouds, and then something like on-prem with uh, Dell EMC or Ceph, we support all that sort of stuff from, from uh, development to production. 
We have cloud native interoperability with uh, all the big players that are out there today. So if you're looking, uh, you know, you're competing and I should say competing, but a lot of us are in the exploratory phase trying to figure out, well, which, which makes sense to us? Is it Docker Swarm? Is it Mesos? Is it Kubernetes? We support all of these. We have integrations into all of them as well. So, uh, but today we're going to focus on uh, Docker as, as, as our main piece. So we can integrate with Docker in a few different ways. We can run it as a stateful uh, service on every single host. Uh, we can actually, or sorry, as a stateless service on every single host to enable stateful applications, just utilizing the Docker engine. We can also integrate with Docker Swarm to make it into a robust service. Uh, in Rexray, if you're not familiar with some history, we actually started this at when it was the experimental version it was introduced in 1.7 in that branch is actually when we started development of Rexray. So it's been uh, two, two plus years now that we've been developing Rexray uh, to the point that it is now. Uh, I know you can't see this because it's covered, but deployment, as I said, is super simple. There's a simple uh, curl bash command that you can install on every single host and you can throw environment variables or a configuration file at it. You say Rexray start and then it goes ahead, creates a Rexray service on the host, registers itself as a Docker volume driver to the host, and then you're off and running. Uh, second, you can actually utilize, uh, as Ben had talked about the keynote this morning, the Docker managed plugin ecosystem. So with the Docker managed plugin ecosystem, and actually if you go to uh, the, the certified Docker plugins today, you'll see that there's 11 Docker plugins for storage in the market today, and there's five Rexrays there today. So we almost have 50% of all the certified plugins that are in the Docker in store. So that's an easy way to be able to do it, and I think I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the demo now, and hopefully this doesn't break because it shit the bed when I was trying earlier. <laughs> Say what? Yeah, right. So what I have right here, um, I'm utilizing a, a Vagrant environment that I built, and all this is doing is, is a three-node scale I.O. environment, and it's gone ahead, and it's configured a swarm cluster for me. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to go ahead and install Rexray. So everybody try to stay off of the Wi-Fi for like a minute, right? So the only way to be able to do this is I gotta, I gotta pull it from uh, Docker Hub. It's gonna, it's gonna install it on this first host. I'm gonna let that go. And since this is gonna go pretty quick, I'm gonna go for these other hosts as well. All right, so this is, this, is, this is as easy as it is to just get started utilizing your X-ray here, right? So it is installing it from the, the Docker store. I'm granting all the permissions for um, uh, basically all, all the, all the uh, in-capsis and all that sort of things. I'm also specifying environment variables that I need to actually talk into my backend infrastructure. This is utilizing Scale.io in this instance. Now don't think of, of Scale.io as like, oh, I have to use this. Like Rexray is a very abstracted tool. So I could be utilizing this to talk to uh, installing AWS or e EF within EFS or EBS or whatever it is, right? So my, uh, well, that's not supposed to look like that. Okay, so that one installed. We'll let this one install. Um, so as I said, and I'm doing that, I'm setting the, the file system type to ext4 only because of this environment. Uh, we also can utilize ex, uh, X, XFS. Uh, I'm also setting the flag for Rexray preemption. Actually having high availability set is true. All right, so now that I've got that, I need to go ahead and create some volumes. So I'm just gonna, for the sake of time, I'm gonna copy paste everything over here. So I'm gonna go to my, my Swarm master here. And when I'm doing this is I'm utilizing the Docker volume uh, CLI or the, just the Docker CLI to create these volumes for myself. So I've gone ahead and created these volumes. Now these volumes, as I said earlier, uh, I would show you the, the package that we're gonna do, but I, I might give it away of, of what I'm getting at here, but you might see it in the very bottom. I could show you like, you know, Postgres and like some tables falling over, but that doesn't, doesn't sound very fun, right? Uh, so I figured let's show like a Minecraft demo. So let's go ahead and let's spin up this service real quick. And again, stay off the Wi-Fi because it actually has to download a jar file. So we're going to say Docker service PSMC, see where it's going. So it's throwing it over to our tiebreaker machine. So it's going to take about 30 seconds for this to uh, kind of get registered. So we can see it's currently in a preparing state. Uh, we've got about maybe 10 more seconds to go until we get into a starting state. All right, so we are now running less than a second ago. It's going to take a second to kind of scrape it and we'll find it. And once we find it, we're going to start uh, tailing the Docker logs to be able to uh, uh, kind of see like where it is in this process. Now, 
as you may have noticed, like with inside this Docker service command, I know it's a little um, hacky of, of looking at everything, but we're creating one replica because with inside of that one replica, you know, we can't break the rules of block storage. We only want one container having read write access to that host. Uh, sorry, read write access to that volume. Uh, but we're utilizing the mount commands, and with this, I'm specifying multiple volumes, the targets that are actually inside the container, and then the source volumes that we had just created, and specifying the volume driver itself. The cool part about that is that if I had multiple different endpoints, so say that I was using EBS and EFS inside my own uh, application, I can utilize that, that tag there at the very end and say uh, the volume driver is Rexray slash EFS versus the Rexray slash EBS, and so I can have multiple mounts inside of my container to do those pieces. All right, so docker logs dash follow, and we'll do F8 here, and it shit the bed. So, well, let's see if we can just do Postgres then. Not Postgres. Because it looks like I have like one minute anyway, so we'll see, uh, see if we can do this. So sometimes it happens, I don't know why, but it looks like it, Maybe, uh, I'm pretty sure there's not an S3 outage going on again, but um, sometimes it's just, that's just how it works. I'm not too sure why. Um, let me go ahead and just stop this real quick. Remove that. So I had this just sitting back here just in case. And the other cool thing about this is that, you know, I can create volumes um, manually beforehand or I can just do it on the fly. Give me one second here. Tap dancing, this is fun, right? All right, so that one's done, that one's done. All right, let's kick this thing off here. All right, so we'll say Docker service PSPG. All right, so this is going again to the tiebreaker machine, and I can say docker ps, docker logs dash follow three zero. Okay, so now we're up and running with our Postgres server. I'm gonna say docker, let's see, what was it? Okay, so docker exec dash it, and we'll go into three zero sh. And we're just gonna create a database real quick. I'm getting the hook, I'm getting the hook. Promise, okay, so there's our Rexray database. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here. And I'm gonna say, um, so when I do this, I'm stopping the Docker process. I'm just simulating a failure here. So once that, simulate, once that failure goes, it should go ahead and just kind of kill it and we will be able to see this get restarted on another node. So we can see it's already failing over to MDM2. Come over here. Docker logs follow B9. I'm almost done, I promise. So we're up and running. I can say, so as you can see, the log file was a lot different, so it's resuming state. I can say Docker exec. Dash IT, what was this? This is B9 SH. And there's our Rexray database, right? All right, everybody, round of applause for me. That was awesome, right? No, I'm just kidding. But uh, thank you so much. Uh, glad that, that ended up working. But if you have questions, uh, so Code Dell EMC booth is right over there. It's the container that has spray paint written all over it. Come talk to me about Rexray and uh, any other kind of persistent data problems you may have. Thanks, y'all.